Um, so last time we were talking about the accounting cycle. Uh, we talked about step one. Um, there were two videos there. Now we're kind of moving on to step two. Before we get on step two, I want to talk about debits and credits. There's a progression to this uh, development, right? So debits and credits, you have to know this. So you can generalize these journal entries and you can post to the ledger. You got to know your debits and credits. So what are debits and credits? Okay. There are the main level elements and then there are accounts, right? For each main level element, there are what are called normal balances for assets, normal balances for liabilities, stockholders, equity, uh, revenue and expenses and dividends and so forth, okay? All debits and credits in accounting mean, going back to your accounting equation, assets are on the left side, liabilities and stockholders, equity are on the right side of the equal sign, right? So you can think of the equal sign as a dividing line. So debits just mean left. And credits just mean right. Now, depending on the element and then the account, a debit may increase or decrease an account, and a credit may increase or decrease an account. Okay? And you can practice this through uh, T accounts. Okay? So a T account is just a simplified, simplified version of uh, a ledger. Okay? So you have the account name, and then you have a debit column and a credit column. So if this was cash, for example, um, and we're saying we are debiting cash, then we will put that on the left side, and then we'll have a debit balance um, uh, or a credit balance, depending on if we uh, withdrew too much money or if we uh, didn't, okay? But this is a T account, just simple basic stuff that you see in your uh, beginning accounting uh, textbooks, right? So, um, for T accounts, if we have more debits than credits, then we have a debit balance in that account, okay? Uh, if we have more credits than debits, more credit transactions than debits, then we are saying we have uh, a credit balance in that account, regardless of what the account is. Now, there are normal balances for these accounts, as we'll see here, just to drive this point, okay? There are normal balances, and you, you need to memorize this stuff, okay? You need to memorize this stuff. Assets and liabilities, normal balances, are as you see here assets increase on the debit side decrease on the credit side uh, liabilities increase on the debit side uh, uh, liabilities uh, decrease on the debit side increase on the credit side I don't know why I, uh, I went stunning Stanley there okay but uh, there is a normal balance for each one of these elements and then the accounts follow the umbrella of the elements for the most part for the most part okay you'll see why I say that for the most part later okay so those are assets and liabilities the normal balance is on the increase size uh, increase side as it says here okay so if it's an asset normal balance should be on the debit side okay if it's not and uh, there may be exceptions but that's where you want the normal balance to be if it's not something is out of whack maybe I don't know uh, liabilities and normal balance is on the credit side. They like the credit side. An analogy I like to use is uh, left-handed people versus right-handed people. Some people are good with their right hand. Some people are uh, good with their left hand. Okay? You try to ask them to do something with their non-dominant hand and the, the stuff happens that's not good. It's They get confused, right? Um, so kind of like that analogy okay it's just debits are left credits are right and if you ever get confused go back to your accounting equation and use the equal sign as a dividing line and see where your assets lie and where your liabilities and equity lie okay going on with debits and credits this is stockholders equity remember stockholders equity is increased by owners investments stockholders giving you money in exchange for that piece of paper that they have um, that signifies ownership and it's also increased by revenues. So, stocks, 
common stock, preferred stock, and retained earnings, or sorry, and uh, revenues are going to follow the rules for, uh, the normal rules for stockholders' equity, okay? The normal rules for stockholders' equity. Also retained earnings, right? Also retained earnings. So common stock increases on the right side or the credit side and decreases on the debit side. Uh, same for retained earnings, same for revenues. Dividends and expenses are going to be a different story. Dividends and expenses go the opposite way. Uh, there are contract counts for um, for all of these, uh, for, for elements, okay? For assets, uh, liabilities, and so forth. Dividends and expenses, you can, if it helps you out, yeah, consider contract counts of the main element, which is stockholders' equity, if you will. I don't consider them contract accounts. I consider them their own elements that fit under the bigger element of stockholders' equity. So dividends don't follow the stockholders' equity uh, debit and credit rules. They go the opposite way. So they increase on the debit side, kind of like assets. Expenses, same deal, kind of like assets, okay, For uh, as far as debits and credits go. And if you ever get confused, go back to your extended accounting equation. Your extended accounting equation, if you just do some simple math, okay, and you want to transfer the uh, dividends and expenses from the right side to the left side, what you have to do is just do um, uh, add dividends and add expenses, because remember, they have a negative sign next to them in the extended accounting equation. That will eliminate the right side, and then you will add them to assets on the left side, and that accounting equation will still equal assets plus dividends plus expenses equals liabilities plus stockholders' equity plus uh, retained earnings plus uh, common stock plus uh, uh, revenues. Okay. And I forgot here, you don't need stockholders' equity uh, there. Uh, you could just have the extended, which is retained earnings plus stock plus uh, revenues uh, and so forth. Okay. So, those are debits and credits. You got to memorize this stuff if you want to succeed uh, in accounting. Okay. If you want to succeed in accounting, here is just to drive the point again. Normal balance, debit balance for assets and expenses. Normal balance on the credit side for liability accounts, stockholders' equity accounts, revenues, um, retained earnings, common stock, and so forth. Okay? Here it is again. Pause the video. Memorize this stuff. Assets increase debit side. Assets decrease credit side. Liabilities decrease debit side. Liabilities increase credit side. Equity for the most part decrease debit side. Equity for the most part increase credit side. And then revenues and expenses just to drive the point. Okay, just to drive the point so you can get these stuff and become great accountants. Okay. All right, so now moving on to what we really are here for, which is journalizing the transactions. Steps one, two, and three of the accounting cycle are what are known as the recording process or bookkeeping. Okay, so if you are going to get like an introductory accounting job, that's basically what you're going to be doing, a bookkeeper. <coughs> so you analyze the transactions first and then write down what happened, which is a journal. And then you post to the ledger, which is transfer from the journal to the ledger. So you have a running balance for each account. Each account has its own ledger. And we'll talk about the ledger in a future video. For now, let's talk about the journal. This is the technical definition for a journal. You can pause the video, read all of this. What I want you to take away is that it's a book of original entry. You're just writing down what happened. It's just a piece of paper. And you're writing down what happened for each one of these uh, monetary economic transactions that we uh, are analyzing and then writing down. So let's take a look at an example. Here is what a journal looks like. You see it's called the general uh, journal. General journal. That's a tongue twister right there. All right. 
so this is what a journal looks like has a date okay an account title okay then it has a reference column the reference column uh, are for each account so for each account if you go back to the chart of accounts that we covered in the last video they will be numbered uh, so cash might be 101 and that is what this reference number uh, is going to come from where that reference number is going to come from then you have a debit column and a credit column debit credit okay now these are simple journal entries and let's take a look at this example it will be a quick review from steps one and uh, and then we'll get into two okay so analyzing the transaction on September 1st stockholders invested 15,000 cash in a corporation in exchange for shares of stock and Softbyte purchased computer equipment for uh, $7,000 cash so we have two transactions here that occurred on the same day investors uh, or owners invested in stockhold uh, St Softbyte Inc okay so now we gotta put on this, the hat of Softbyte Inc that's us okay what happened here for the first part for the comma um, people gave us money cash we got cash so assets on a mainline level analysis assets increased by 15,000 and then the specific account cash increased by 15,000 so the totality totality of assets increasing uh, came by way of the account called cash uh, and then uh, we issued uh, stock in exchange for that cash okay so in this case it's common stock um, just for this example um, so that increases stockholders equity in total okay so stockholders equity in total also increased by 15,000 uh, due to the increase in common stock the issuance of common stock and I explained this in the previous video so go take a look at that I don't repeat um, sometimes I do. I lie. Okay. So that's the main analysis. And then for the second portion, um, they purchased equipment of 7000 or a soft bite. Us, we purchased equipment of 7000 for cash. Okay. So what did we receive? What did we receive? We received equipment. Equipment is an asset, right? So assets increased by 7000 uh, via this account increase in equipment of 7000 and then we forked over some cash they didn't give us the equipment for free so we are saying that um, assets decreased by seven thousand also um, it decreased by seven thousand and it came by uh, the decrease in the specific account of cash okay <coughs> so that's basically the analysis portion now we're gonna talk about debits and credits so in the journal we plug in the date okay September 1st that's fine okay that's for the date that's simple the account titles now as you see here this is how you should book these transactions debits always come first before credits as far as the journal is concerned and debits are flush with this line uh, this this line for the column titled account title Okay, so whatever debit it is, in this case, it's cash for the first part of this transaction. So we flu it's flush with this line, uh, the first line for the column uh, entitled account title. And then you put in the amount, 15000 in this case, in the debit column, in the debit column, right? Then credits, whatever credit it is, uh, is going to come second. Okay, so all your debits come before and then credits come second. Notice that the credit is indented, okay? So if you're doing this in Excel, you press the tab on your keyboard. Uh, or sorry, if you're doing this in Word, then you press the tab. In Excel, uh, you have to press the little uh, tick marks uh, to indent a little bit, okay? But it's indented, okay? Debits on the left, credits on the right. And then for common stock, you put it, the number, uh, the monetary value, on the credit column. Okay, so that's a journal entry. Okay, that's it. That is all you have to do. So for cash, we're saying we are increasing cash, which means we debited cash. For common stock, we are saying we are increasing common stock, which means we credit common stock. Common stock is equity, cash is asset. Great. The reference again, 
comes from the chart of account number for the specific account. Okay, not gonna worry about that too much right now because <coughs> it's mostly automated um, in the real world. Okay, then the second portion of the transaction. Um, we received equipment, so we are saying we are increasing assets by 7,000, which means we are debiting assets. And in this case, the specific account is equipment, so we are saying we are debiting equipment for 7,000. So we put the account title here uh, for debit, and then we put the monetary value in the debit side matching equipment. Then we credit an asset. In this case, we are saying for the second portion of this transaction, we are decreasing an asset also. Uh, in this case, the decrease comes from the account cash. We are decreasing cash by 7000 so we indent credit cash, and uh, we plug the monetary value, the 7000 in the credit column. <coughs> and that is all she wrote. That is... An example. So these are examples of um, basic transactions, right? Basic transactions, just two accounts involved for each transaction, and that's it. Okay?